I was always thinking, how cool would it be to do it right there and then without any prep, just sit down at a table, grab a guest with all the conference noise behind me, clip the microphones and record a podcast. And that's what happened at the last Digital Pathology and AI Congress in New York. Together with Giovanni Luhan, whom I already knew from our crossover podcast with the Digital Pathology Association podcast Beyond the Scope, he was at the conference and we just decided to record this episode for you. And we are commenting on our impressions and the new trends in digital pathology that were communicated at the Congress. So let's dive into it. Giovanni, so cool to meet you in person, finally. We've talked how many times? At least two podcasts together. Yeah, and I've been a devoted follower of your podcast and Thank you so all your much. activities online. I think you are a very inspiring person. If you don't know, she's my professional crush. I you. mean, I'm inspired by her, by her passion and how so, she's really into digital pathology. Thank you so much. You're really into digital pathology as well. That's why we like probably are all over the place talking about it. But here we are um, at the Digital Pathology and AI Congress uh, organized by Global Engage. And Giovanni was chair yesterday and today and he gave a talk. I'm still waiting for my turn to speak at 2.30 about GLP validation of digital pathology and drug development. But so far, your impression? Well, so far, you travel to conferences all the time. What's the like? What do you think is different about this one? Then I can tell you what what I think is. Different. Well, it's smaller. It feels that you get to know more people because how small it is and the breaks are bigger. So they on purpose leave a lot of time for people to interact with each other mm -hmm. and with the vendors. So I think that's a great, great advantage or different point from the other ones that focus more on the academics and just Science. many conference back to back. I think this has a lot of the social aspect to it that I think is is, is very good too. So for networking, I think this is a very good conference. Yeah, that was, that was my goal also to come here and you get, so they have like those ninja tricks. They have the long breaks and they have like one-on-one -on -one meetings with the vendors. And you mentioned in your talk that in Europe, because Global Engage organizes those conferences across the globe in Asia and Europe, and they say that their European conference is the biggest. This one is not the biggest. We have like 350 people here. And I, at the beginning, when I was talking to different companies, they were like just 350 people, and it pays off to like be a sponsor here. Like, do you get good connections? And they say yes, because it's very quality audience. And then I was like, why is this audience more quality? because they are already doing digital pathology. And you mentioned that in Europe, they're even like more ahead. They are already troubleshooting what they have been doing for a couple of years. But here, everybody who's here is either super close and looking for solutions or already doing and presenting workflows, which is different than just going to a scientific conference and reading about the research. So yeah. that's what I think distinguishes this one for networking perfect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had the opportunity to go to both, and I think that's the main difference between here and the European, which will be in London mm -hmm. in December. I will be there. Will you be, I don't know. But I will be here for next year as well. But you're going to probably go to Pathology Visions as well. Yes. Yeah, I thought I would be going, but I'm actually going to a veterinary pathology conference. Ah. Where I'm going to be the chair, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm the chair, so I don't think I can... No, you must go I'm, to that one. I should show up, right? <laughs> I, you should give me some tips to be so organized about traveling with your equipment. See, here we are. She has the microphone that she brings. We have a lightning device. We have the laptop and we have the camera and... Tripods, we have tripods. Uh, the only thing missing is hair and makeup that I told her next time. <laughs> Yes, I'm going to tell you next time uh, to, to be prepared at a certain... But it's just incredible how well prepared she is and how much she really delivers for the for your followers, for your audience. Yeah, kudos to you. Thank you so much. This is really, really nice to hear. You know what I wanted also to touch on? That like in digital pathology, because it's... I would still consider it cutting edge and like developing discipline where people are working through the kinks of the workflow, 
new devices are coming up. Sometimes you're still limited by your device. So you come here and you see that there are new options. And like there is this artificial separation of science and the industry. And in this area, it mingles very much. And also yesterday, there were several vendor presentations. And the level of science that those vendors have to demonstrate to actually like go and sell it in the healthcare space is incredible. Like there are publications in Nature, in JAMA, whatever your highest impact factor journals are. And not only that, then they have to like increase the size of the cohort to, to, to be able to present it to the FDA. And I think this is undervalued or, or like not perceived that much when you come from the perspective, oh, this is the science and this is commercial. Here it mingles very much and that's why I think it's cool that we have a super cool venue. I, I don't know if you can appreciate. Let's get some here camera showing. It's an old bank. So we have columns and we have a super cool setup there where the stage is. We have the stage in the center and the vendors are around the public. So it's not disruptive to go and quietly talk to them also during the talks, which I don't know if I recommend or not recommend. It doesn't matter because you don't disturb anybody and who's interested in the talk is just going to listen to the talk. So you implemented at Ohio State Digital Pathology. Everybody is digital now and that, that was also the, the topic of your talk. Yeah, most and most everybody still we have. Uh, you have some rebellious people who no, don't? Well, not really. We have some uh, a few specialties that are lagging behind just for no. the nature of the... Their specialty. Is not yeah, really... like hematopathology, cytopathology, mm -hmm. renal because of fluorescence. Those are not fully digital. They okay. see some of their slides digitally like him. Look at the marrow biopsies and the lymphonal biopsies digitally, but then they have all the smears, marrows, okay. and those are still in the original glass format. So that's that's how, how we're doing now or what we're trying to implement to catch up with these sort of specialties because back in the day there was no technology uh, available for them. So they naturally kind of step aside and having not enjoying the full benefits of being digital. But now with a lot of AI coming in both directions, cytology and hematology and renal, now it's time for them to be incorporated. And we are working very diligently now to try to get the best possible tools for them as well. So one, one point that I have to mention here is like, because it's still young, we are still limited by the tools that we have like all the specialties that you mentioned, if there were tools, they would probably go digital in the same time as well. But the other that I wanted to ask, like what was your interaction in the hospital with the vendors? In, in the... general, like with the vendors that supplied you with your hardware, with your everything, like all the support? Well, you know, I, because all this was initiated by Dr. Anil Parman, mm -hmm. who's the vice chair. He has this concept of this modus operandi that is very welcoming to everybody. Yeah. Other institutions that want to collaborate and any vendors that has any products that they want to demonstrate to us yeah. or they are seeking for any type of collaboration. So over the years, we've interacted with most vendors out there. And so we keep a very good relationship, not only with the ones that we actually use, but actually with Everybody else as well, the ones that we don't use at all or the ones that we've established some sort of project on the side or sometimes ongoing projects with other vendors. So I think that gives us a very unique privilege to be able to get exposed early on to what each vendor is coming up with. Mm -hmm. And I think that is just a great thing to do because when you realize, like in case of Dr. Pawan, he's a very busy person, he's the vice chair, he leads over the informatics entirely pretty much he's also the signing out pathologist so when you get all these phone calls from different vendors that they want to show you something or bring you something for you to evaluate or whatever you will see how most people will decline those invitations and maybe just ignore them but uh, he always replies he always says yeah welcome come in plan the, the the next meeting so i think that's that's how we keep that relationship full, constantly increasing which i think is a, it's a very by the very way idea. if you don't know dr anil parwani google wikipedia digital pathology and his picture is on the Wikipedia page of digital pathology. He's the doctor of digital pathology. And I'm going to have him on the podcast soon. But yeah, so I think this attitude,
attitude at this conference when people start announcing their partnerships? I think that was not present a couple of years ago. I think people were more like everybody developing their stuff in their own bubble. And here at this conference, I see them coming together. Obviously, some are in competition with each other, but mostly they're like seeking who would be a good partner to partner and do more together so that the one vendor can keep their core competence and the other one provides their core competence and together they, they build a tool that was, uh, for example, evident in yesterday's pages presentation where they developed algorithms. They like achieved the milestones of having an FDA cleared computer aided diagnostic test. And so they like heavily are heavily invested in image analysis and they have it in a regulated environment. And now they uh, collaborated with MindPix. Yeah. MindPix. I hope this is the correct. Yeah, that's 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 it. But and I know they yeah, are. And, they... and they are bringing more image analysis capabilities that are from different stains. You know, everything part of the diagnostic workflow, but they don't want they don't want to split their focus from their core competence of developing things on H and E. And they brought in a partner, which I think is I don't know. I cannot even give a perspective because this is the only industry I've been so involved in. So I don't know if it is a natural thing that's happening, but I like it. I like it that people are starting to like look for partners. No, I think it's an it's an evolution because as you said, it started as oh let's do this and let's do it or south and let's do it well now i think it's very well known that you cannot do everything so it's better you, you keep doing something and of course we have software Go figure you cannot do everything yourself no 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 it's very it, it's uh, <laughs> when we first started i think that was the that was yeah. the, the goal i want to take you like digital from beginning shop. to end yes one stop shop people like that and so that's what we were trying to do or they were trying to do but it was obvious that this is going to be an exploding field, what is it is an exploding field, mm -hmm. and you have to, rather than trying to do everything, more or less, like maybe, mm -hmm. maybe not, fail yes. here, fail there, better to focus on something, do it good, and then partner and with your another. Core competence and then bring in where you want to expand. Yeah, I think on one hand, it's not surprising, because like, whenever you like come up with idea, you want to protect this idea, and you want to like go for it and capture the market with it. But on the other hand, we're working in the healthcare system in a hospital lab like how many systems do you have that need to be interoperable and this interoperability concept only like started taking off two years ago three years ago in this space still there are like some people who like don't want to have an open api don't want to like export results in a oh, I'm, I'm coming from the image analysis background but like the results are only usable in this very system. And I mean, that's that's for any software, but on the other hand, in a lab, you have to now interact in the, the, in the era of digital healthcare with so many other systems that this is not an option anymore. No. And digital pathology is catching up, so. And it's gonna become more crucial as more of the other subspecialties within pathology and the other specialties in medicine also become digital. There is a lot of opportunities there of digitizing not only glass slides, but all sorts of images that mm -hmm. come from different sources and then interconnecting those images with the original data, with the medical data, mm -hmm. with research data. So in the end, I think this is going to be a global action, a global set of data from healthcare mm -hmm. within a hospital that eventually to make it even more productive will probably be interconnected with another hospitals, with networks of hospitals, with countries, with, with the world. industry probably to accelerate drug development. Which, be, which brings before, we get criticized for that because it brings the HIPAA regulatory into concerns. Yeah, that's an area like, you know, the, we mentioned science versus vendors and then there is like healthcare and pharma industry. Like pharma is working on drugs that are being used in healthcare. How about like make it faster? I think this will be a great opportunity for when we are more interconnected with more interoperable systems that will be crucial. And to alleviate the concerns for private medical information and all that, I think that there is a whole workflow coming that way too, where you can have the data that you need and have the data that is private and mm -hmm. be able to separate it and use what can be usable and protect all the patient information mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah. Of course, that requires a lot of trust. And right now, because it's new, 
trust I, or good firewalls or uh, the concept of federated lear- learning is, is being popularized where you like train your models on one set of data and then you don't take the data and pull it with other data. You take the model and put it on different data. So it gets the information, but there is no breach of informational systems. Yes, so, that's... Okay. But I haven't heard anybody talk about it. Well, all those are to explore. All those are developing tools. Uh, well, not developing tools. These are tools that have been available in data science for a while. There is nothing new on that. But now it's new in healthcare. Okay. And uh, all these concepts to be for healthcare to be able to accept them and open up, they have to make sure that the information is actually truly protected because you don't yeah. want to find out after being in one of these communities of learners where you combine information that some yeah. of your private information will be leaked out. Yeah, so, and so I yeah. think that's the reason why it's not not, not that, that uh, a great talk right now. Thus, I think everybody bringing up that topic will immediately be confronted with the regulatory aspects of yeah. that type of sharing. And I don't think we have at this point a good way to explain, prove defend, and prove. Yeah, is- yeah, I think so because, like, like I said, like wh- whenever you get for the tools for the devices, whenever you get clearance, you already have so much data you can go and confidently present it, and uh, people will ask you questions, but you can defend your work. Whereas when yeah. it's still work in progress, I mean, yeah, yeah, you don't have that end result that exactly that will determine that oh yeah it's successful there were no breaches there were nothing unexpected i think people are, are coming out for lunch so yeah we yeah. one last thing that i want to yeah. say because I this is important one, one more last thing as well is that i hope that we talk more about that mm-hmm. that we talk about more this type we of learning some experts and about the, the podcast about the cloud too which is another cloud was was touched upon in the keynote about cloud versus on-prem storage and i actually posted it on linkedin and i was like i didn't expect this is going to generate any kind of discussion a lot of controversy uh, it about is that. it is a controversial topic and the same for the same reason it's unknown to the yeah. healthcare environment the risks are unknown you know you have you have all your posts Line and you're not mm-hmm. concerned about no oh, my somebody still them <laughs> but, yeah but but that's that's a thought I had like I'm okay if somebody's gonna copy this I have like presentations on them I'm like good for them then they spread it to more people it's because it's educational content and my yeah. goal is to give it to as many people as possible so if somebody takes it please go take it not encouraging to steal my content but <laughs> but in general as a risk it's a low impact risk yeah. for me. Uh, and the same, and the, other... the same as you, you post stuff in Facebook, some people are very careless, they post whatever, but they know that that can be accessed and stolen and posted somewhere else and that they have no control. Yeah. So that is understood on the web environment. If you post something there, it can appear at the other and end of the yeah, world. Take out of context, remix. and Yeah, but that's okay. We accept that risk. But when you're dealing with private medical information, we know we that the act- hospitals are yeah. highly liable for those. And so that concept won't pick up as quickly as it needs to pick up because of the storage issues. But I think the more we discuss it, the more it gets ex- out, yeah, out in the open. We, yeah, we, get to, we learn to trust it. Yeah. So we, one- I hope. One last thing. So what's your like nugget of wisdom that you picked from this conference that I, I have I'm gonna tell you in a second what sentence I'm gonna be keep keep repeating to people, but what's like the one thing that you're taking out and will tell other people? And mine is and also that was also from the keynote uh, lecture was uh, when there there is no more ROI on digital pathology. Because this is the way pathology is going to be done in the same way as nobody is calculating ROI on having an MRI in a large hospital. It has to be there. There is no negotiation. You touched on this with like, oh, if we would live in an ideal world, pathologists would go and say, we need this for our work. Because we do. And when you like, I I do um, like 100% digital sign out and that was also in the keynote lecture i'm embarrassed to say that i don't remember the name of the person who gave the keynote speech he was from ontario mackenzie health uh, it's uh, andy andy evans he's my my good friend so thank you andy because uh, words of wisdom from your presentations are now going to the world but yeah so he said that the pathologists are no more asking for glass but one of their his pathologists said if you take away this digital i'm changing jobs and i feel the same way if they take away my digital pathology I'm looking for 
an employer that can give it to me. Mine has a lot to do with that too. Why I think what I'm, I think it should echo not so only in my head but with everybody is that we should forget about digital pathology conference. This is a pathology conference. And that's that's the way that it's done. Pathology is yeah, digital. Yeah, you don't have now. digital radiology conferences, no. do you, right? <laughs> we can add, maybe we can say computational pathology to uh, yeah. mm-hmm. incorporate all the AI mm-hmm. into it. But digital, definitely, I think at this point, it should start being, being redundant. Mm-hmm. Well, thank Which you. Which is fantastic, because that's where we want to go. Thank you so much, Giovanni, for, for joining me. And uh, yeah, thank you for listening. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. It was great. Thanks so much for listening to the end. If you were at the Congress, we might have already met, we might have seen each other, and we might have even talked. And I know that not everyone can go to all the conferences every year. So this is why at Digital Pathology Place, we launched the club, the Digital Pathology Club which has the course component where all our digital pathology place courses are hosted and the community component. And in the community, we are discussing the current topic and interacting. And we also started the daily digital pathology paper challenge. So if you're interested to trying out the challenge for you next week, I have something special for you. I have a one week free trial of this membership. And the moment you join, you can access everything that we have in the courses as well as the challenge. So go ahead, click on the link below and give it a try. And I talk to you in the next episode.